discussed on another uh, tape or video that I did about numbers in the mind. I know we're on a magic show. I think it was a Deborah Hospital Foundation magic show. I discussed how numbers equal thoughts and thoughts equal numbers. If somebody were to give me three numbers off the top of their mind, one through nine, no zeros, as I <laughs> showed in that show, uh, I can discern what they're thinking about. And also, if somebody's in a certain life cycle, they start thinking certain thoughts or certain activities or events start coming up in their life. So I just wanted to bring out the point that, and I said if visitors came from a different planet, the way they would communicate is with through numbers and because they would know that numbers equal certain thoughts and certain thoughts equal certain numbers. So a scientist would be able to sit down and put numbers in front of each other and they would eventually be able to communicate. Uh, most people have a, a situation where there's six degrees of separation. You know somebody and know somebody, and through somebody, you know almost everybody. And that's what it means. Uh, for years, I taught classes complementary uh, to psychics. I actually taught professionals how to make predictions. Most of the time when people are actually uh, having a consultation with somebody, it, it's almost a question and answer uh, situation where the person asks questions and the other person tries to answer it. And primarily you're only dealing with the information that the person themselves has and you're not really dealing with new information. When you make outright predictions, you're dealing with your own information or your own methods for ascertaining what information that you're going to give them. So you're actually either channeling it or through your different skills, you're coming up with whether it's numbers or hands or graphology or cards or whatever, you're coming up through your own abilities or your own tools that you're using, some form of predictions, and you're not just dealing with their information. Uh, when I was about, I guess, seven to nine years old, I was observing a bunch of kids playing baseball on a baseball field, and I saw colors around them, and I described to the other young kids around me, not the kid with the green around them, the kid with the red around them, etc. And they all looked and, and they couldn't see any colors. And I, I didn't realize at the time I was too young that I was the only one that saw these colors. And I thought there was something wrong with my eyes. Uh, I, one time I was at a mall in Long Island. It must have been 30, 35 years ago. And they had a psychic fear going. And I went up there to attend the psychic fear as a special feature or special appearance and on the marquee they said that the water witch was going to be there and I didn't know what a water witch was and the guy looked like somebody dropped him out of a helicopter and <laughs> this is what his appearance was and he was wearing like camouflage clothes and and apparently everybody knew who he was I, I understood he appeared on tv and he had written many books and uh, he was on the news quite often in those days, and I, I didn't know what a water witch was, but nevertheless, it, I was curious, and I volunteered. And what it was was he had this long, uh, like, throw rug, you know, uh, kind of like a doorway type of rug that rolled out 40 or 50 feet. And he put these rods in my hands, which he made from coat hangers, and a little cardboard, and he told me to just think about a wire. And I said, well, why? He said, no, just walk the rug and think about a wire. And these two rods were straight out. And when I got to a certain point, they both turned sideways. And they weren't hooked up to anything. And right under where they turned sideways, they, they would go back and forth. If I backed up, they would straighten out. If I went forward, they would go to the side, was the wire. <laughs> Just a piece of wire not connected to electricity or anything else. And, 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 uh, and, and the, the thought of a wire 
made these hangers in my hand uh, just move to the side. And it was funny. If I moved back, they went straight. If I moved forward, they went to the side, indicating exactly where the wire was. Uh, and I asked the guy. The guy then did another test on me. He put the the uh, the dowsing piece, the uh, dowsing rod, the dowsing metal hanger over my head to see if I was losing any energy. And he said I had an unusual ability to keep energy in because usually when he when he put it over people's heads it would go around like a helicopter blade but in my case it didn't even budge so apparently i'm able to work with my energy and in, in a different way than than other people do uh in 1980 i i did a conference i did a, actually a talk on coexistent time at the 1980 parapsychology conference in atlantic city and and that's where I saw Yuri Geller. I attended one of his sessions uh, as just an observer with friends, and that's when he bent metal with his mind. And the uh, keys uh, of people I was with bent, and I saw him just merely put his little fingers across the, the keys, and they straightened out. And he wasn't using any tension, any tools, or anything else. Like I said, it was one of my... Uh, uh, speechless moments. Uh, one time I was at a, a a psychic fair where I was doing a special appearance, and, and there was these two older couples, man and woman. They both did palmistry for years and years. So I would customarily kind of like exchange readings with people to see what they did. I would first tell them what I do, and usually they would just ask me questions. Do you have any questions? I said, no, just tell me what you see. And usually they, they would say, well, what, what, what questions do you have? I don't have any questions. Just Because I would just tell people what I say. That was my style. I, I didn't go this back and forth thing, ask questions. Because when you ask questions, you're only dealing with your own information. Even if the person's correct, you're not dealing with any new information. So I would always say I don't have any questions. I was seeking new information. Well, these two old palmists looked at my hand. The, 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 the man yelled to his wife, come here, come here. I think her name was Millie. Millie, Millie, come here, come here. And, and he saw a mystic cross in my hand. He said he had only seen this in books. He had never seen anybody that actually had one. And I have this perfect X between my fate line and my life line, which meant that, uh, uh, that mystical things or the psychic world or the occult world would be a major part of my thinking in life, which it really does indicate, and that's true, that that's the, that's the way I feel. Uh, most people, you know, uh, who go to a psychic are almost looking for a counseling session. I, I call a psychic, most psychics, uh, a poor man psychiatrist. And and when you go to a psychic fear, it's an amazing thing, you know. There's people that do all kinds of things. Uh, they would do rune stones. I knew a lady that read flowers. They do tarot cards. They do regular cards. They do dice. They do dominoes. Uh, they do mandelas, which is like drawing with a crayon, and they interpret it, and so forth and so on. Numerology, palmistry. Uh, tarot cards, regular cards, and so forth and so on. And and I love the environment. I, I I would love being exposed to all of it. And and I really enjoyed the ex the experience of being around so many people that did so many things. Some of these people would spend their whole life to learn one skill. Now, whether they're really good at it or mediocre or whatever, that depends on them their ability. If somebody has a running ability and then they practice, they'll become a very good runner. If somebody has a psychic ability and they practice, they'll become a good psychic. And the, those are the words of Alan V. And you can tune in on YouTube and see my various videos. They were all performed in, in front of live audiences. For years, psychics used to come to some classes that I would hold just for psychics, and I would teach them how to do predictions. Take care now.